So this guy always has to be wherever you go. And when he gets trapped behind barriers, fences, gates, kennels, leashes, he gets stressed and frustrated and he becomes neurotic. Barking, whining, and not a big fan of it. And so I understand that it's the barrier that's producing the problem. So what I'm doing is I keep the gate open and I've been doing my thing out here. And when he comes out, I chase him back in. So he starts to feel that this is where he should be. And then I change how he's feeling about coming out and having to be involved in what I'm doing and what's going on out here. When I change that feeling, his behavior changes. And I have to think from a dog's perspective and this is about controlling the territory. He thinks he can go and do and be whatever he wants. And the owner is having a problem with him because of this mentality. And so we're living in a way now that is shifting it. And this is just one example of that. So I should be able to go and be out here, do what I need to do. And he's back here. I did not tell him to lay down. I didn't tell him any of this. I'm making him feel that when he comes out here, that there's danger to that. So then he goes, you know what? I'm going to stay in here. We are used to trapping our dogs, confining our dogs. And this can lead to stress because they aren't mentally and emotionally connected to it and so we have to be able to get into their mind so when it comes to toby he's a clingy dog and this is something that has been fed and created by the way that people have been living with him interacting with him going about sharing affection with him and so they feed and create this very problem and it can be very difficult for people to actually get to a better place because the very thing that's creating the problem, sometimes the people themselves have these strong beliefs, attachments to. And so when you tell them that they no longer can be living and acting that way, going about things in that manner, it can be very stressful for them and it can be very difficult. But in order for things to change, they have to change. And change is also often uncomfortable. And so with Toby, I don't allow him to be clingy with me, pushy with me, even outside of this scenario with the backyard gate, fence. I have to see that when that gate's closed and I'm on that other side, he's stressed because he can't get to me. If I open it up and he gets to me, he, he no longer looks or sounds neurotic. He doesn't look the, or sound the same. And so I have to start making him feel that I don't want him to come out with me. I have to be honest. So when I go out that gate, I don't shut it. 
I go out and then I make them feel like, hey, don't you come with me. So separation anxiety is often, what I see, is created by the way that people are living and interacting and going about affection with their dog. And it's often a very difficult thing to move through because of the human being.